For me, I think it started at Holy Faith Convent, Cuba in Trinidad. When I started taking physics and math classes, and I had to do a lot of physics labs, and I realized that this is interesting stuff to me. And it was interesting because the whole idea that science basically explains the world around us and everything that we see in our day-to-day -day lives can be explained by science and math equations. So I think that's what originally ignited this, okay, I want to be a scientist plane. So then I had to try to figure out, well, what exactly scientists do? How do you go about becoming a scientist? And I think with talking to like all of my high school teachers, doing my own online research, I realized that I had to have a good math and a good physics background. And that was the way that I went through um, high school, was through the science stream, then I went to Form 6, I did math and I did physics, and then I applied to U.S. universities. So I came to Florida A&M University, I did a bachelor's in physics, and I realized that I wanted to do more in order to get to a particular place in my career, so that led to a graduate degree, and I got my master's and now PhD, all in physics. You know, you don't see a lot of people that look like me in the sciences, in particular in physics. So I had to find mentors in non-typical ways, I would say, where I would go to all these different conferences, in particular, the National Society of Black Physicists, and that's where I met most of my mentors and they connected me with different people and I was able to, you know, advance my network and then I figured out, okay, there's different types of physics, there's different ways you can apply physics and I decided on nuclear physics because I felt like it had a wide range of applications. The problem that we're solving is basically understanding nuclei and categorizing them just like you would see the periodic table is characterized by these elements. In nuclear physics, we want to be able to group certain nuclei together by studying their properties. Sometimes we tend to get caught up in, you know, work nonstop and not take breaks. So my form of relaxation is going to the gym, in particular boot camps, I like kickboxing and um, traveling with friends. I have made it a habit to take a trip for my birthday every year. So that's something that I do for fun. Caribbean scientists, they're gonna bring a different perspective. And I would hope that, you know, the Caribbean scientists who do come to the U.S. to study STEM, that we're gonna be able to go back to our home countries and advance the technologies there. In physics, there's so many different fields. You know, you have nuclear physics, biophysics, condensed matter physics, high energy physics. You have theoretical physics versus experimental physics. You know, people do laser physics. I mean, there's so many different types. So I think it's important for people to let, um, you know, upcoming students know that if you have a passion for a particular type of physics, what type of career path that's going to lead to. You know, for instance, people who do medical physics, they may have backgrounds in nuclear physics. Nuclear physicists, you may see them in nuclear security, you may see them in nuclear energy and renewable energy, you see them, you know, you will see teachers and in the fundamental nuclear physics labs. You may see them in government and nuclear policy. So there's a lot of things to do with a physics background, not just the typical, you know, academia positions. When it comes to doing a graduate STEM degree, you're gonna have a background in a wide range of things. So what these companies are looking for very often is not the specifics of what you did for your degree, but more so what we call these soft skills that you have. You know how to run experiment, design an experiment from start to finish. You know how to work with minimal resources. You know how to analyze data. You know how to sort large amounts of data. And you know how to present it in a particular type of way. So with Intel, my background in nuclear physics, I've done work with accelerators and semiconductors. 
and Intel is basically a semiconductor manufacturing company. So even though my research topic is not specifically on semiconductors, I have that exposure. So that's what I'm gonna be bringing to a company like Intel. My ultimate goal is to pursue medical physics, but I need more training. And after doing a PhD, I want to get some research and industry experience before I venture into any more academics. <laughs>